Hi. Welcome to Bottom of the Stream. I'm Nick. I'm Adam. Uh, this is episode three. Episode three of season two. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting through it already. We are. How are you this week? Very good. Yeah. Any gossip? Gossip? I've got loads of gossip. Have you? Should we? But we probably shouldn't talk about Not that on the, uh, <laughs> on the podcast. Okay, tell me afterwards. Okay, fine. Awesome. Yeah, this is the uh, bottom of the stream. If you want to follow us on Twitter, please do. It is at BOTS underscore podcast. Instagram is the same, at BOTS underscore podcast. Facebook.com slash bottom of the stream. Uh, email address is bottom of the stream at gmail.com. And the website is www.bottomofthestream.com, where you will find every episode we've ever recorded, both stream tables and loads of other cool stuff. And is it worth just sort of outlining what we're doing here for any new listeners that may have Can jumped do, on board? if you want to. So we are basically on a never-ending quest yes. to try and find hidden gems lurking at the bottom of the stream Yeah, that is Netflix. That is Netflix. So we, we board this boat every week and we sail down the stream. We try and find random films to recommend. You know, now we're in October. Yeah. And we're fast approaching Halloween. Ooh, yeah. We should rename the show. What should we name? Bottom of the Scream. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that for one week only. <laughs> okay. We'll name it. We need to do a horror film that week. Okay, fine. Deal. Cool. Yeah, have you been watching anything at the top of the stream this week? We always do this little bit where we talk about stuff that we're not supposed to talk about. No? You're looking at me like, why are you asking me that? <laughs> no, I don't think I have. I started watching Disenchantment ah, season yes. two. So I um I would quite like to watch that. I, I it's on my list Have of things. Have you ever seen any of it? No. I I've just I've just not got to it yet. It's good. It's it's so it's by the guys who make The Simpsons. It's yeah. Matt Groening's newest T V show. But it's more based for kind of an adult audience. It's good. It's definitely worth watching. It's fun I mean, half an hour comedy. Fair play to him. It's not oh, like he never, he never <laughs> needs to lift a finger in his life and nope. he hasn't had to have done that for many, many years. I think it's the first film, we, first thing he's done new since like Futurama. Okay, so he doesn't do many, but it is is it, it's all like medieval. Yeah, it's set in medieval times. It's about a, a princess, an elf, and a demon who are friends. Excellent. It's good. It's good fun. It's it's completely crazy. But it's I will fun. check it out. I will yeah, definitely season two's check just it out. started this week. And I think it's this week or last week. So yeah, definitely check that out at some point if you can. It's only on for half an hour episode. They're easy to watch. There's something I did want to mention. It's not something I have watched, but it's something I want to watch okay. because when it arrives on Netflix. So later this month, 24th of October, yeah, uh, a new TV show is going to hit Netflix and it's called Daybreak. Right. Have you heard of this? Nope. Shall I, can I read you the synopsis? Please do. Sounds fun. So Mad Max meets Mean Girls. Okay, I'm sold. Don't tell me anything else. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little okay, bit. Okay, please cause, do. Because I think it will sell you even more. Sounds amazing. A post-apocalyptic take on the high school drama. We meet the cliques of Glendale School before and after a nuclear explosion where cheerleaders, jocks and nerds are transformed into gladiator-esque warriors complete with axes, flamethrowers and a serious serving of gore. Describe the look on my face. <laughs> You're beaming. <laughs> that sounds insane. Matthew Broderick is in it. Amazing. Done. As the school principal. <laughs> when does that come? 24th? 24th of Get October. Get it in the calendar. I'm getting it on my calendar. I, I, and that, that is, sounds awesome. In, that is literally all I know about it. I've not seen a trailer or anything. I have, I have no uh, sort of clue on where it is aimed. Uh, <laughs> but it's just from that. Yeah, sounds I'm right checking on my it street. out. Yeah, I'm definitely checking that out. Awesome. I'm, I'm in the market for a new TV show. So. Well, there you go. Excellent. Sold. Definitely. Anything else? Um I don't think so. Not not off the uh not for not for the intro. No. I do have a game. Oh we've not done a game yet this season. First game of the of the series. Go for so, it. What's, um, what's what we're playing? Right, so obviously this week we're talking about Handsome. Yeah. A Netflix mystery movie. Yeah. Have I got the title right? Yes. Okay. Which is a detective movie. Yeah. And obviously throughout the annals of time there's been tons of famous tv detectives there are so we're going to play a game based on those tv detectives okay cool. and it's called cop show or flop show <laughs> excellent okay so i'm on board i I, I have got a number of tv detective shows in front of me yeah and i'll give you one to start with and i will tell you how many number of episodes that were made of that show okay and then i just want you to tell me with the next show I give you, was it higher or lower? 
in terms of the number of episodes that were produced. I can do that. On board? Yep. Good. Let's see how far you can get through. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay, so I'll give an easy one to start off with. Go for it. So, number one is Luther. Okay. The Idris Elba starring British cop show. Yeah. So, there were 20 episodes. Of really? Luther. Really? I didn't think there'd be that many. So, that's your starting point. Okay. So, next, The Wire. Uh, definitely more. Baltimore set. I've never watched The Wire. Drama. I'm pretty sure it was on for a while, so I'm going to... More than 20? Yes. Correct. Yes. 60. Right, okay. 60 episodes. Right, you're on a roll. Good start, good start. So next, yep. let's go with Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, okay. There's been quite a few seasons of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but are they like 20 episode seasons? I'm going to go higher again. Higher than 60? Yes. Correct. Yes. 130. Wow. 130. Good. I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's, it's, it's so funny. such a good show. Absolute gem. Right, where should we go next? Let's try Miami Vice. Oh, Eight is set. <laughs> How many Brooklyn Nine-Nines was there? 100, 130. I'm going to go lower. Miami Vice, lower than 130. Correct. Oh, I'm doing well. 112. Oh, awesome. Wow, I would have thought it was a lot lower than that. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. Ooh, there's some tricky ones in here. <laughs> Let's go with Columbo. Oh, so Columbo ran for years, didn't it? So... 112. Higher or lower than 112? Higher. Is that your final answer? <laughs> lower. <laughs> it's 69 episodes. Oh, really? Is that all? Yeah. Wow. I think there was a lot of like TV movers and things like that. Yeah. But okay. only 69 episodes of Columbo. Excellent. So, yes, you are correct. <laughs> lower. Well done. <laughs> right. So, Poiro. Poiro? Yeah. <laughs> Poirot. Um The Belgian Detective. Does that include the recent remake? Or was that a film? TV episodes. Yeah, so it's not the Kenneth Branagh murder on the Orient Express. How many am I going up against? 69? 69 episodes of Columbo. Less. <laughs> oh, I've thrown it away, haven't I? <laughs> you're you're, you're going to hate yourself. <laughs> 70 episodes of oh, Poirot. Oh, that's not fair. Unlucky. Gutted. Let's go. Well, let's go. We'll keep end, going anyway because yeah. I'm enjoying it. You're squirming a little bit, and that's fine. <laughs> so, um, let's go with Law and Order next. More than more or less than seventy. Yeah, more. Did Law and Order go for years? Yeah. Have a ballpark. Go on. How many do you think? Where I hold you to this? Have a guess. Uh, three hundred and twelve. Four hundred and fifty-six episodes. Wow. Twenty years. I knew it had gone for a long time. Blimey. Right, we're nearly there. Nearly there. Right. Which may give it away <laughs> the next <laughs> the next one. So uh, let's go with Diagnosis Murder. Oh, that's your wife's favourite show. Yeah. Um, Everyone loves a bit of dick. <laughs> Van Dyke. Especially your wife. Um, I sent less, obviously less. <laughs> yeah, 178 plus five TV movies. Cool. I threatened to send her a dick pic once. <laughs> It was just a picture of Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, I bet she loved it. Yeah. Next one. Murder, she wrote. This is the penultimate one. Okay. Murder, she wrote. Now that went for a long time as well. More or less than 178. More. Correct. 264 episodes. Excellent. I enjoyed the, that. Last one. There's one more. There's one more. I thought yeah. you said that was the last one. So that, no, that was the penultimate one. To so say the last one. Hawaii Five-0. The remake. The remake? Yeah. Oh, I love that show. Um, two six four, more or less. Less. Correct. Yeah, because of two one nine. Do they still make that? I don't. Know. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure either. I think two hundred nineteen episodes. Wow, it's a good show. Yeah, it's good fun. It's got right, most of did... the cast have lost in it. Yeah, because they didn't want to <laughs> leave just Hawaii. Left, didn't, yeah, exactly. You did pretty well there. Thanks. Considering good. I don't watch cop dramas, I was quite <laughs> impressed with myself. I find cop TV shows really boring. So they're all the same. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that. And this is that procedural element, isn't it? That's just, it's, I think there are some good cop-based TV shows, but I'm I'm more interested in the, in the like ongoing story of the characters rather than the paint by numbers. Yeah, I know what you it's, mean. It's all it's got just, to be wrapped up within forty-four. minutes. I really minutes. struggle with them because they're all the same, and I just I, people can't write a TV show without a policeman being in it. <laughs> cool. Okay, that was quite good. So I did well there. I'm quite yeah. proud of myself. Yeah. Good performance. Excellent. Are you ready to talk about 
this week's film? I am. Never been more ready. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, this week's film, we have watched a film called Handsome, a Netflix mystery movie. Yes. Netflix have got themselves in the title. Um, It's from 2017. It's an hour and 20 minutes long, so quite short. And currently rated at 5.2 out of 10 on IMDb. Written, directed and starring Jeff Garlin. Uh, Also stars Stephen Webber, who you will know... Uh, he's, he's, Stephen Webber like, kind of goes in everything he's a face that he's, I recognise but I couldn't quite place <laughs> he's in absolutely everything he's the principal in 13 Reasons Why Okay. so Netflix viewers will know him from that yeah, he does a lot of Stephen King films so he was in Stephen King's remake of The Shining and he's I think he was in Desperation the TV movie of that and he's done a lot of them sort of things um, also stars obviously Jeff Garlin as Detective Hanson who you will know from the Goldbergs more recently, but also from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, absolutely. He's brilliant in both of those. Yeah, he is. Uh, Daddy Daycare is in that as well. Yeah, he's also in um, Safety Not Guaranteed. Is he? Yeah, which comes up a lot in this podcast. But yeah, he's in that as well. I can't quite recall him. I've seen it on his IMDb. I don't don't remember him being in it, but he is in that as well. Uh, That comes up a lot on this podcast. We're going to have to watch it at some point. Also stars Natasha Lyonne, who plays Detective Scazzari who you will know from Orange is the New Black. Russian Doll. Russian Doll, which is brilliant. American Pie. American Pie, also Back brilliant. Back in the day. She's also briefly in Ad Astra. With oh, Brad Pitt. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Orange is the New Black is amazing. But Russian Doll on Netflix is really good. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's really but she's good. She's great. She's amazing. I love that. I love her to pieces. Uh, she's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. She's so good in this. She's so good in everything she does. She's really good. She's and her hair's really good. Yeah. Her hair is as good an actress <laughs> as she is. Yeah. My chair's creaking, apologies if you can hear it. I'm trying to stop it. Um, and also stars one of our favourite people, Amy Sedaris. Yes. Because she's in. she's been in a couple of things on I this. W- I nearly said friend of the show then. I would class her as a friend of the show. We mentioned. We seem to mention her quite a lot. She was in Ghost Team, uh, yeah. um, she's which been in we did in the last season. Kimmy Schmidt, which you've been obsessed with over I've the last compl- few I finished weeks. now. Yeah. I've finished Kimmy Schmidt now, but she's in that. Uh, she's in Bojack Horseman. She's amazing in that. Uh, I love Amy Sedaris. She's she's a hero and she's so funny. She just has to speak and you just laugh at her. Yeah, she's good. Uh, there's, there's also it's only really a cameo to be honest. Um, but um, Leah Remini is in this. Yeah. So she's probably most famous for playing um, Kevin James's wife in King of Queens. Yeah. But she has kind of forged a second career over the last few years of trying to pretty much single handedly bring down Scientology. <laughs> Um, and she's a really interesting character. Yeah, definitely. So I've I have actually read her autobiography. Oh, really? Was it good? It's quite harrowing. Some of the stuff really? she went through um, when she was sort of, I don't want to say enslaved, but brought up into Scientology by her mother. Right. And all the trauma she went through, sort of trying wow. to escape, um, and basically being blackmailed by the church, and um, she throws a lot of shade towards certain famous people that you can imagine are high up in Scientology and she's got a couple of documentaries and a, like TV series on discoveries like uncovering Scientology oh right okay I'll have to check some of them yeah. out yeah so, is that book good? I'll yeah give it a read yeah it is it is interesting that's the second time today that Scientology's come up for me why? So I, re- I read an article about Jason Lee oh yeah remember him? yep he used to be in everything and now he's in nothing because he's a Scientologist and he just can't get any work now because of it no, I just randomly clicked on an article about him earlier. How strange. Yeah, so that's basically your cast. It's a heck of a cast. Really good. Really good cast. Uh, it was, like I said earlier, it was written and directed by Jeff Garlin as well. So it's, And it's you expect kind of he's the sort project. of guy who has got a lot of friends he can call on for favours. Yeah. To be in this sort Definitely. of thing. Definitely. He's, he's been in and around comedy in Hollywood for a very long time. Yeah, yeah so should we get in, into the film? Yeah, let's go for it. Should we t- talk about how the film starts? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really interested to see what you made of this. Yeah, so you start off with, before anything's even happened in the film, you start off with, you see Stephen Webber in a swimming pool. Yeah. And he kind of gets out of the pool all wet and dripping and sexy. And he comes, he comes up to the camera and he says, my name is Stephen Webber. This is a very Troy McClure vibe about this. Very much so. <laughs> he comes up to the, he basically goes up to the camera and says, my name is Stephen Webber. I play the murderer in this film. Yeah, before it's even before started. Before it's even started. And you, it took me right out. I was like, what are you doing? This is 
this this got me intrigued from the start because I've never seen that anything like that done before. I was really like I was I was hooked. I was yeah, like, I want to see where this is going now. What am I going to see? And uh, what I ended up watching was one of the most random things <laughs> I think I've ever seen in my life. But we'll go through it. So it starts off after that. We cut into like the title card and then... So it's kind of like basically a cheap ass James Bond title card. Yeah. So you know, like... Oh, you, you don't know. You, we've talked about this before. Never You've never seen, seen a James no Bond idea. film. Do you know the the kind of trope of a James Bond intro is like sexy ladies yeah walking across the tops of guns yeah you know the bond theme is playing over but it's black and white it's silhouettes then yeah. it's all kaleidoscopy uh, it's basically a cheap version of that and it's just one woman with a hula hoop <laughs> yeah it does appear quite a few times yeah. in the film she's, she's just peppered throughout the film yeah but yeah it's basically a, a, a black a silhouette of a, a woman against a, a white background doing hula hoop stuff. yeah what what you're getting here is the Larry David style comedy, isn't it? It's, you know what you're getting. It's that. I I don't think we would be too far wide of the mark if we were to say, I'm not sure there was a script for this film. I I completely agree. I was thinking that all the way through. Other than this is some really a, good comic actors. A very walking very light this. outline. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. Was like, this this is there's definitely more than a little bit of ad lib going on here. Um, so the, the scene opens with Detective Handsome taking a class teaching some detectives on like murderers and psychos, which was, was quite humorous, I thought. Yeah. Then Amy Sedaris comes in, interrupts the class, and she plays the lieutenant who's in charge of the division. Yeah, so she, she's the chief, yeah. She's the chief. She's like five foot nothing. Yeah. She's got this awful wig on. But she comes in, she says... Um, she grabs Handsome and says, "You didn't. You haven't signed your retirement papers." And he's, he looks sort of like, "Well, no, I haven't signed my retirement papers. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'm not retiring. I'm not retiring." <laughs> and she gives him some cookies. She's basically which, coming onto him. Yeah, she's properly For, coming onto him. I'm, I'm saying coming onto him. It is in the workplace. She's basically sexually harassing him. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, so she gives him some cookies to take home. She says they were leftovers, and then she just walks. She just walks away. Yeah, and she just completely. She she blows into this film a few times. Just comes in. Delivers the funniest lines in the whole film and then leaves again. So at that point, he goes home on his own because he lives on his own with his dog. Yep. The, one of the best dog film dog actors I've ever seen. Beautiful dog. Beautiful doggo. It's a big Great Dane. It's the on, if you go on IMDb, he's the second actor listed. Oh, is it? <laughs> it's the the dog. He takes his dog out for a walk and he meets his crazy neighbour. Who I don't. Did we get a name? I don't think we got a name. No, he, I don't think so. They don't. They don't seem to get on. The neighbour thinks that the dog's crapping on his lawn. Um, Handsome saying, no, he's not crapping on your lawn. They have a bit of an argument. It's all light-hearted humour, though, I think. But his neighbour says, have you been and met your new neighbours on the other side? Yet. He says, no, I didn't even know I'd got new neighbours yeah. on the other side. So He's too busy. He's out detecting. Yeah, he's a detective. He's never at home. Well, Although, no, just, he's he's not managed a, to work out home. he's got new neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> he's at home quite a lot during this film. So he takes, he takes, because he doesn't want these cookies because he's trying to lose some weight because Jeff Garland's quite a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so he's like, I want to lose some weight. I don't want to eat these cookies that Amy Sedaris has given me. There could be anything in them. Um, so he takes them around to the, as a nice gift to the new neighbours. Yeah. And so he knocks on the door and a young girl answers. We later find out it's called Heather. Yeah. But she isn't one of the neighbours. She's the babysitter. Yeah. So she's looking after the kid. She's looking after the kid there. who lives there. But she won't let him in because obviously stranger danger. Don't open the door. Even after he tells her she's a, it tells him she's a cop. Yeah, and he shows his badge. He shows I think, his and badge, she's like, yeah. "Well, that could be fake. How do I know who <laughs> yeah. the hell you are?" So she's very apprehensive about letting him in. She doesn't let him in. She tells him to leave the cookies on the side, and um, that's that's the end of that interaction. Yeah, and I think he goes. He then there's then a shot of him sort of going home, settling down. For yeah, it's and kind of yeah, just he's on his own. Yeah, he lives. He's basically, tearing the He lives on his own. Yeah, is what they're t- trying to say at that and point. He's, he's he's a bit lonely. Yeah. So then you hear his phone ringing in the night. So he's all spread eagled in bed. With the dog on. The dog's got like a four poster bed yeah. next to his bed. Uh, but his phone's ringing. So he gets a call. He says, right. He says to the dog, right, I've got to go now. So he gets up. Because obviously it's his partner that's called him. And uh, they go to a crime scene. But well, by the time she picks him up, it's morning. Yeah. And there's loads of cops already <laughs> at the crime scene. So why she needed to ring him up in the night, I don't know. Oh, while they're on the way there, they talk about the film San Andreas. Yeah. This- and how it's the best film ever made. And they're both just like, yeah. It's like it's not even an argument. It's like the greatest thing. The, the greatest thing made. the world's ever made. 
Have you seen San Andreas? Yeah, I have. It's yeah. not the greatest film the world's ever made. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just like, uh, well, it's fact. Why would it be any, why would any other film be better yeah. that's ever been made? It's quite, it is funny. It is funny because it's completely not the greatest film ever made. It's not even the greatest film The Rock's ever made. And they, they end up at this crime scene and you see a head on the floor. Yeah. That's all you see. There's no blood around it. It's literally just a head. And it turns out that it's the head of the babysitter. I'm glad that this was clarified because I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have got it either. Recognised that <laughs> just from the... Just from her head. The prosthetic that And we'd see. only seen her through a glass door earlier yeah. on. But yes, yeah, he says, oh, I know this girl. This is my next door neighbour's babysitter. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's this kind of the, his earlier on his class of detectives are all standing around him. He, he must be teaching these guys to detect. Yeah, and one of them says, "Oh, it's definitely suicide." Yeah, there's two really funny lines here. There are. So, and um, I wish there was more of this in this film, where there's this, yeah. like you say, this group of uh, up and coming detectives who are sort of tra- yeah, you don't trailing handsome this, around, and um, one of them sort of says to him. Boss, I want to quit the I want to quit the force forever. <laughs> yeah, because there's this decapitated in front of him. Uh, body. He says, "Why?" He says, "Because there's body parts all over, and I don't like it." <laughs> and then, and then later on, like you say, he says, "Oh, has anyone got a theory?" And, and one guy goes, "Yeah, I think it's suicide." suicide. I burst out laughing. Yeah. It, cut, it got me straight away because I wasn't expecting. <laughs> and he's like, well, "Well, I suppose it's a theory, yeah." <laughs> How has she? How has she cut herself into bits? I, I was. It, it really tickled me. I was crying. I was like, it's, "There's just something about the way that guy delivered that line that really worked." And then it happens instantly. The next line is some guy goes, "No, obviously it's a drive-by." Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, and he and he talks through. He goes through exactly what he thinks happens. Yeah. He's like, this car drives up and he shoots her, and then he drives off. And he's like, yeah, "But there's no bullet hole, and she's cut up into pieces on the lawn." I've, at that point, I was in. I was like, "If this is what this film's going to be." I'm all over it. And um, not only has she been decapitated, but the rest of her body parts have been, you don't see this, but no, it's referenced it. a number of times, Yeah, have been carefully arranged into a Star of David. Yeah. <laughs> Which, again, made me laugh. Yeah, so we find out at that point that it's an actor, a famous actor's house where they are, and uh, it's his lawn. And just as we find that out, a Hollywood tour bus turns up. Yes. Because... <laughs> And a sort of star tour yes, of the stars house. Tour of the stars, you, you know the sort of thing that goes on, and it pulls up, and it's full of Japanese tourists yeah. who are having the tour translated to them by an American. And there's some really funny, really funny lines in that as well, because they they obviously can see this body yeah, on the floor. taking photos of they're it, taking photos of it, filming it. It's brilliant. One the, of them the, says, "Am I? Is that body carefully arranged in, in the, the star, star of David?" David. <laughs> And she goes, oh, I'm not sure. And then she goes, we'll get the rabbi. And then this <laughs> rabbi stands up. <laughs> For me, this scene is the best scene in this film. Uh, so I, there's another scene later on which I was, I really enjoyed. This is the best. Yeah, this is the comedy funniest wise, it's comedy the scene. We know, we've talked before about my relationship with comedy films and how I have a real thing of not, I don't really go for comedies. But this is the sort of humour that I'm at. This is my level. It's subtle. It's subtle. <laughs> it's subtle. It's not stupid. It's it's really well written. You have to pay attention to pick some of this stuff. Yeah, up. nicely crafted comedy. I, 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 so far, I'm all in on this. So obviously, the the house we find out the house is owned by Stephen Weber's character. Yeah, uh, yeah, character Talbot Bacon. I, I didn't write his name down. I was hoping you had <laughs> good name. Good name. Good great name. Um, he obviously handsome goes in and speaks to him. Goes into the house, meets him, says, and he says he was out pet sitting for his neighbour. Yeah. <laughs> as you do he says if i ever want to play a pet sitter i've i've got this experience now i've got this life experience this is what actors do we go out and we get life experiences uh and then he went home after that and watched one of his own movies from when he was younger oh he's got an absolute ego on him hasn't he big this star character. big star he I love loves this character. watching himself yeah so he, he says i think the film was called patty cake yeah and it was from when he was younger oh and he says he didn't he didn't hear anything because hansom says you if you were at home you must have heard something going on on your lawn he says, "No, I didn't. I didn't hear a thing." Then his this lieutenant guy comes in, who's in this film a couple of times. He isn't Amy Sedaris's character; it's a different lieutenant. So yeah, this is like the I don't know what area manager type, <laughs> yeah, superintendent or whatever. And he says, "Oh, it's definitely the ex-boyfriend." Yeah, <laughs> they sort of seen it's always the ex-boyfriend. Yeah, that's, he just that's... wanders in, says that, and wanders. Well, they, he says that, and then they kind of stare at each other. For an uncomfortable amount yeah. of time, <laughs> just look at each other, Can't, and nothing else happens. They no. just stare at each other, and then the camera pans and back. The camera and pans just... away from him, and they're just staring at each other. It's it's brilliant. <laughs> so 
so obviously Handsome now knows that his neighbour's babysitter has been killed and he still hasn't met these neighbours. So he needs to go and meet the neighbours, but also give them the bad news that uh, yep. their friend's been murdered. So he goes to meet her. I didn't catch her name either. I think the neighbours. Yeah. Neighbours' name. Neighbours' name. Uh, <laughs> neighbours. Nora. Nora. The baby. The, the child was called Hazel, I think, wasn't she? No. Heather? No, the no. babysitter was Heather. What was the kid called? Casey? No. K. It began with a K, didn't it? Caris. Ah, oh, Caris. Yeah. That's not a name. Well, at first I thought she was saying Paris. But it was, uh, no, it's Caris. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so he, he he goes over and tells the neighbour. What's her name? It's, we're going to have another one of these issues, aren't Nora. We? He goes over and tells Nora what's happened to Heather. And the kid overhears. And uh, she comes in and she says, oh, did you overhear what they said? What we were just talking about? And she says, uh, yeah, the angels came and took Miss Heather to hell. <laughs> she was... I think I'm having that as my line of the film. Yeah, I think... that This kid was brilliant. I also wrote that down. This kid was brilliant. Nora then says, well, I need to go to work, um, but I don't have a babysitter. So Handsome says, okay, I'll uh, I'll look after the kid for you. Yeah. Because he's got nothing better to do. I'm a detective. Who else, you know, who, who would be who, safer? Who are you going to trust? And it's funny because he, he kind of says to Karis, oh, you know, wouldn't it be really excited you're being looked after by a detective? And she just totally she like... completely no-sells it. Yeah, blanks she's him. Not having it at all. But she does say, oh, I'll put on a dance show for you. Yeah. I liked this bit. <laughs> I loved this bit. So she um she gets all dressed up in her dancing gear. She takes him up to her bedroom. And uh, he, she says, all right, you sit on the couch. I'm yeah. going to put on this dancing show. So she opens her wardrobe doors and there's curtains hanging inside. She's obviously some sort of show child. And she goes and stands behind the curtains. And put some music on. Put some music on. And doesn't do anything. Again, it's just <laughs> silence. Yeah. Apart from the music. Apart from the music. Just nothing's the, happening. You can see the kid standing behind the curtain. Yeah. And he can see the kid standing behind the curtain. But she's just not doing anything. It's brilliant. And then he says something like, well, wait, are we starting? And she pops her head back for him and says, no, this is just music to the set, scene. set the mood. <laughs> I just, and then yeah. she just walks off. I mean, this is someone... Jeff Garland, who is obviously quite confident yeah. with his what he's producing here. Because this is now two instances of just silence. Yeah. Used for comedy. Yeah. Successfully. Yeah. And it works really well. It did. The, the, especially <laughs> that time, because it made me laugh, the fact that she was just standing behind this curtain yeah, for just ages. It was ages as well. Yeah. It was a long time and he was like he was looking all uncomfortable and the kid was just not doing anything. Back to the film. Then later on the mum comes back, Nora. And he asks her a few more questions about Heather. Like, does she... Who was she? Well, he needs to obviously find out. He's yeah. The, she's do, the only person do, she Are knows. you aware that she ever got into any trouble? Yeah. Um, all that sort of stuff. And Nora sort of says, yeah, I I am. I have heard us talk about, you know, she got into a couple of fights. Yeah, she had a married ex-boyfriend. Yeah. She's got really bad money issues at one point. Um, She got into some bar fights, she says. That's right, yeah. She's obviously not the sweet little innocent babysitter that we met earlier on. Nora, the only other thing Nora says, which sort of gives Handsome his next lead, is that uh, she had a roommate yes. called Amanda. So that is Handsome's next port of call. Yeah, so he goes to visit Amanda, who was also a highlight. <laughs> so he goes to the flat and I have his, all of his stuff's in the lounge, because she lived in the lounge. Um, and the roommate just completely knows how that she's not interested. She's like, she's just trying to get uh, Handsome out because she's meeting she's, a Tinder date. She's got a Tinder date on his bike. Yeah. There's a Tinder date biking over at the yeah. moment. She says that she she doesn't really know that much about it. She didn't really like Heather by the by the way she just talks about it. But she says she may have been dating a, an old dude. Who she thinks had a bit of money. Yeah. So he, he says, when you say old dude, and she was like, oh, in his 40s. <laughs> and that's kind of the interaction with the roommate done. It was, he didn't really get a lot out of her no, other than that. No. So he goes to meet the coroner. Yes. Because obviously she's been taken to a mortuary now. And the coroner observes that she's very greasy. She's, her skin's very greasy. <laughs> there's a this was really curb your enthusiasm. Yeah. This next exchange that they had, there's there's like a few minutes exchange now between um, Jean Hansom and the coroner, and they're debating the difference between a cream <laughs> and an oil. Yeah, or a cream and a lotion. Yeah, yeah, the, for, for quite a long time. Yeah, so one's but, water based the, and one's oil. Based. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and he, he can't get his head around why she's so greasy. There's a couple of times in there as well where, and again, having been quite used to this, having seen Kirby Enthusiasm a lot. Kirby Enthusiasm is a great show. That Jeff Garland is clearly about to or has just corpsed. Yeah. 
during this scene with the um I'd love to see some with the mortician some bloopers. Yeah. It'd be brilliant. There must be loads. Where he's just slightly smirking at yeah. the corners of corners of his mouth. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Um the guy the coroner reveals that she was killed by blunt force blunt <laughs> it's easy for me to say, blunt <laughs> force trauma to the head. Yeah. Um and she was cut up very sloppily. These are the word he uses. Yes. Post mortem. Yeah. So after she was died, by she someone was who doesn't up. really know what they're doing. Yeah, it was just like hacking away. Um, we go we go back to the office at that point, and Amy Sedaris turns up again. A little. Uh... <laughs> she asked. So she asked Jean Hansen how the cookies were. Yeah. And she says, "I have got a bit of a secret. Yeah. They uh, they weren't leftovers. I I made them especially for you. Yeah. And she kind of starts rubbing, it, walking her fingers up his chest, yeah. and proper proper flirting hard with him but then she snaps and she starts shouting at him about his retirement, his retirement papers, papers again. again and he's just like what are you on about yeah, i'm not retiring <laughs> she's completely <laughs> batshit crazy amy sedaris has plays crazy characters really yeah. well i don't think anybody plays it better she plays in um ghost team she was playing a psycho yeah. crazy lady in kimmy schmidt she plays an absolute extreme insane woman who is amazing um bojack horseman she plays a really weird, insane cat. <laughs> <laughs> she nobody plays crazy better than Amy Sedaris. I'm putting it out there. Nobody. Yeah. So she says to me, "Not so But then she goes again, and that's the end of that's, that's the last time. I think that's the last. I think it here. is. Yeah. It's two little scenes of absolute wonder. She's amazing. So they find out then, because this is the point as well where they're going through all of um, Heather's finances and stuff. I think. Yeah. So basically, they've they've rooted through all the stuff they've that got they phone found records, the, haven't they? yeah yeah so and they find that she's been speaking to this guy who's a little bit older than her yeah and he runs a fireworks company correct and his name was lloyd lloyd vanderweel yeah which is a great name again <laughs> so they go meet him yes they go to his office yeah they go to his office and he's got a receptionist who doesn't know how to work the intercom <laughs> on the phone shouldn't have been <laughs> funny because it's the oldest trick in the book, yeah. but it was brilliant. But then when he comes out of his office, Lloyd comes out of his office to talk to them. Yeah. And she, the receptionist is still talking to him on the intercom. On the intercom, as even though he's standing, he's in, front standing of in front of her. Stupid. It's stupid, but <laughs> brilliant. And it turns out he was the guy that Heather had been chatting to or seeing. Yeah. But he says, we weren't an item. She's an old family friend. Yeah, he denies that they're together as an item. He sort of says, I was helping her set up. She's new, newly moved to the town, yeah, you know. She's new to the area. Trying to look after her. Um, so they break the news to him that she's been murdered. And he goes, he gets a bit distraught. He says, I can't believe this. This is crazy. But he says, I, can, I can't believe this, but also I can believe this. Because he says he completely gets it, why somebody would want to murder Heather. Yeah. Which I thought was quite funny. Because he explains that she's... She's got a lot of baggage. She's hard work. She's difficult to be around. She's that sort of uh, that sort of girl. That's they kind of leave at that point. But there's a there's an underlying tension there between Handsome's partner. Well, um, Skazari. Handsome sees before before we get onto that bit. Handsome sees uh, a picture, doesn't he, in the office? Go on. Or is it in his wallet? Oh, it was in the in the guy's wallet. In yeah. Lloyd's wallet, and it's a picture of a little girl. Yeah, and. It's the same little girl we've met earlier. Yes. It's Karis. Karis. And it turns out he is Karis's dad, so he's Nora's ex-husband. Ex-husband. Yeah, you're right, he does. I, I, I haven't written that bit down. I missed that. So he goes back to Handsome, because he, he kind of leaves Skazari there. Yeah, she wants to go to the bath. The bathroom. The bathroom. I'm doing inverted commas. Yeah, because and she's like, leave me here. It's fine. I, I might be a while. Yeah. But there's, there's clearly some sexual tension going on between the, the two of them, which comes up quite a few times <laughs> going forward. So between Lloyd and Skazari, Skazari. Yeah. So Handsome goes back to the neighbor's house where we meet Karis again, Karis again, and her friend, who was brilliant. Again, it was only in the scene in the film a couple of times, but he was like campus Christmas, a little camp boy, yeah, little camp boy. Everybody's got a little camp friend, and uh, it was brilliant. It was, <laughs> I think he was only in it twice, but they're just the little cutting lines and stuff. Yeah, and this is where he he kind of realizes that Lloyd is the her um, Nora's ex husband, and, and she freaks out. She's like, "I can't believe he's sleeping with Heather." So she thinks that Heather's been planted into her house to spy on her. The back in the <laughs> it cuts quite it cuts around quite a lot. It does film. yeah. There's, yeah. there's a lot of like short sharp scenes. Um, so they're back in the office now, and they're going through the finances again, and it finds out that Heather's been given five hundred dollars a month from Lloyd, and she's also calling him every day. Yeah. 
because he was paying her to spy on his ex-wife. Yeah, so, so Nora's right. Nora's right. She was spot right. on. So they go back back to his office. Yeah, have another chat the, with him. Back to the fireworks office. Meet the receptionist again, who's a bit mental, and she's got a book. Yeah, so it's basically a sale. It's, they've it's had their sales coffee brochure. table books. Yeah, made a book made of but photos of fireworks. Yeah, great, basically. lovely pictures of the events that they've they've yeah, sort so of because they're like professional firework out. artists. Yeah. they go to events and put on firework shows. So handsome says to her, "Can I take the book? Can I have the book? And she, borrow it? Yeah. Borrow the book?" And she's a bit like, "What the hell do you want the book for? It's a bit weird. It's the only book I've got." But he takes the book, and um, yeah, it cuts away again. It's like I said, it's short, sharp scenes. Yeah. So he's back at home on his own. Yeah. And the next bit is might have been my favourite scene in this. The, one of my favourite scenes in get, this. Where they have a drink together. Yeah. So Nora comes over. Yeah. So the neighbour comes over, and Jean puts some music on. Um, and there's a real, it's a real touching scene yeah. of them both sort of opening them up about the problems they've got in their lives. How diff- Nora talks about how difficult it is being a single mum. She's gone through a divorce, and it's really well acted. And it was a bit out of nowhere. Yeah, it was. It, it's. I was suddenly like, where has this come from? <laughs> it's it's quite like I say, quite touching, really sensitive, and and sort of. Jean gives her a bit of a pep talk. Yeah, and, she starts and, crying as well. Yeah, she? there's a lot. There's a lot going on. She's got the dog on her lap. Yeah, which is a big old dog to have on your lap. She sort of falls asleep, and he he puts a blanket over her. Yeah, and, and it, was, it was just really well done. Really good acting from both. Just of them. just before she falls asleep, she tells him that her dream is to be a dog masseuse. Yeah, and to just move away and go away from all of her troubles. Yeah, and he says his dream is to have a family. Yeah, so it's like touching little scenes, and then. As she falls asleep, they kind of break that tension a little bit because she turn, she's, I think she's sleep talking. Yeah. But she turns to him, and then she says, "What do you think of a shaved pussy?" And then just straight back to sleep again. Yeah. It throws him completely. I burst out laughing again. It's just those little. I'm pretty sure he he didn't know that was coming. No. Um, um, that's when I thought this there's some ad lib going on here. But the next morning she's gone. He went to obviously went to bed at some point and she didn't stay the night. She'd gone. The blanket was all folded nicely on the sofa the next morning. Yeah. But the kid's looking in through his window. Like something out of the omen. Yeah. Standing the, standing just outside the window. The, looking um, through the window. Karis, yeah. Yeah, Karis. So Jean uh, Jean? Not, yeah. Is his Jean, name Jean? Yeah. Jean Handsome. Jean. Yeah. Nice. I'm getting better with now. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'd said that one by mistake and got it right. Um yeah, Jean's kind of sitting on his sofa flipping through the fireworks book. At this point, and uh, he spots a picture. Yeah, he's actively looking for clues because yeah, he's got his he's... magnifying glass yeah. out and everything. Hasn't I don't it? know what he's expecting to find. No, me neither. He does find a picture, and in the picture is uh, the actor who we met earlier. Yeah, Talbot Bacon. Talbot Bacon, and he's in the picture with the fireworks, and Heather's also in the background of the picture. Yeah, looking at him at the same event, and you could see her looking at him, and she doesn't look happy. No, so he. Goes back to see Lloyd again. Yeah, so it's third time. Field, third time. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're in a field this they're time. They're in a field, right? yeah, setting, up a, setting up an event. Skazari's with him again. And Lloyd confirms, yeah, I remember that event. Yeah, Heather was there with me. It was a celebrity party. It was yes. full of celebrities. Hence why the actor guy was there. And he says there was, at the event, you were given a goodie bag. And in the goodie bag, there was some $1,000 cream slash lotion. Yeah. <laughs> that you were given as a gift, which picks his interest up again because we know that Heather was all greased up and Skazari makes another excuse to not leave she says um, I'm going to hang around and ask him some more questions and then and so Handsome just calls her out and he it. knows he's, now he's, exactly what's going like, on he's like where are you even going to do it where, we're in the middle of a field where yeah. are you even going to go <laughs> And, and then you just see like, them walking off into I've got ways yeah. I mean. then you just see them walking off into the trees I, I've said how good she is already this film absolutely lights up any time Nat- Natasha Leon is in it. Every screen lights up whenever she's on it. She's amazing. She wasn't given a lot to do in this film, but what she was given, she did really Goes with well. It. She, yeah. she she went really well with it. Horny detective. Yeah. <laughs> she just, all the uh, one thing is just to get this guy. And she does. Uh, I love her. She's absolutely brilliant. Whatever she's in, just go and watch. So he decides to um, go back to the actor's house. Yes. Big Horn. Not Big Horn. What's his name? <laughs> Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> Like, bake, like bacon, but with an R in it. Okay. It's late, forgive me. Yeah, so he goes back to their house, and he before he goes inside, he hears a dog barking, um, and it's from the neighbor's house. So he decides to break in. 
to the neighbor's house to rescue this dog because obviously it's been left alone um so he he, <laughs> he breaks in through a really small window and like i said earlier jeff garland's a big guy yes he is and uh, he manages to go through the window land in the car because there's an open top car just inside and then roll out of the car and then he, so he's in the, he's in like a garage where the dog's in the garage and uh, he gets the dog some water and as he's in there he finds a saw like a hand saw and it's covered in cream yeah so he's this is piquing his interest even more now because you know he, i think he fe- i think at this point he realizes what's gone on so is he, I was a bit confused. Is he still in the neighbour's garage or yeah, is he in now in Bakehorn's garage. garage? No, he's in the neighbour's garage. Right, okay. It says that later on. Yeah, so he, he finds this saw and then, so he goes to see the, the actor on the premise. He kind of lies to him and says, I've just come to check all your windows and doors yeah. and make sure the locks are all right because you might be in some danger. So he check he checks the patio door onto the back garden and then he says, take me up to your bedroom, I'll check because you've got a balcony up there. I'll check the door up there as well. And as he's in the bedroom, he gets a bit of a talk because this guy, like you said earlier, has got a big ego. He likes to tell people all about himself. And Handsome finds some cream. Yes. So he finds this $1,000 cream. And he, he pretends to know what it is. He's like, oh, this is that really expensive cream. And he's like, didn't you get some lotion as well? And he says, oh, I give the lotion to a friend. Yeah. Interesting. So what he does, Handsome, at this point, he starts to take a few shots at some of the actor's films. Yeah, he kind of starts to wind him up, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he wants to try and break him down a little bit. So he takes a few shots and... It doesn't take many. It doesn't take many. Just a couple. His, uh, Bacon has a very fragile ego. Yeah. And he loses, he loses his shit. Yeah. So he kind of attacks Handsome and they have a bit of a scuffle, but it all breaks down. And then Handsome says, I've got a theory of what happened. Yeah. And this is the old... the Out of all those TV detective shows we talked about, yeah. This part of this is... The setup of this film is it adheres to those... Yeah, it's those tropes. So absolutely. this is now handsome, basically addressing yeah. us and and, and the, murderer. the murderer. This is what's happened. This, so, the, so he goes through. Like, he says, "I think you met Heather at the party, and she wasn't allowed a gift bag because she was working. She wasn't a guest. Yes. So she decides to latch on to somebody who can give her a gift bag, and she meets you. You end up going home together. He gave her the lotion as a gift. Yeah, they did the naughty. They did the you naughty. Would, you would say." And then on the night of the... That was obviously on a different night. And then on the night of the murder, she stops by again. And he creamed her up. <laughs> I've written down here. Yeah. They obviously do the naughty again. <laughs> um, but then they find... Slippy slidey. Slippy slidey. Uh, then they find one of his movies on the TV as they're like kind of coming down. And uh, she says, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah. It's pa- it's the Pat Kate movie. Yeah, it is. And she, yeah, she basically is saying to him, "This is terrible." You were awful. She says, at this. "Was this when you first started acting? Before you had lessons?" It's, yeah. So and, she proper goes for him. Yeah, and the rage is just building and see, building. This is all as this is being acted out, but yeah. as Hanson's talking over it to tell us what he thinks is going on, um, he says, "Then I think you shoved her, and she fell into this statue, which he points out, which is like a, a like an award. It's like a globe." So he pushes her, but because they were both creamed up... Yeah, she goes flying. They, she lost she her slips. footing. And then I think you went into the neighbour's garage and got the saw, and you sloppily cut her up because of the cream. And that's why there's cream on the saw. And he does say you went into the neighbour's garage, so I'm assuming. Oh, okay, cool. Because he was dog-sitting. Yeah. We found out earlier in yeah, the film, yeah. so he got the keys to the garage. And then you dump the body on your own lawn to put people off the scent, because who would who would be crazy enough to dump a body on yeah, their own who lawn? Would, yeah, who would... Do a murder and then leave the body on there. And then he says, and you rearrange the body in the shape of a Star of David because you're a self-loathing Jew. <laughs> <laughs> Which got me again. I didn't expect to laugh as much as I did in this film. Hansom gets, gets attacked by... He kind of runs at him again. But just as that happens, Scazzari bursts in with a gun. Yeah. And he's For like, the oh. save. For the save. And he's like, how did you get in here? And he was like, oh, I tricked you. I opened the door when I was checking the doors. I didn't check the locks. I unlocked it. So he gets arrested. And then, really randomly, do you remember earlier in, I think it was Wish Upon when we had a really random cameo? It was Josh, uh, not Josh Brolin, the other one. Um, Jerry O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell just randomly turns yeah. up. This happens again, because Kelly, Ke- Kaylee Kawoko is just randomly here at this point. Yep, she's the neighbour. She lives next door. Hmm? She's the one it's who's left garage. the dog on its own. Yeah. It was a really, really strange cameo. And there's a whole bit again. It clearly just improvised where where um, handsome is just saying, oh, oh, "It's really nice to meet you. I just, I love saying your name. It just rolls off the tongue." Yeah, it does. Kelly Kawuko. It's a great name to say. Um, 
And she says, well, this is all, what's going on? So he tells her the, the story of what's happened. And she's like, oh, this is really fucked up. And then she goes, get, she goes to the driver, take me back to the airport. Yeah, I'm going, going back on holiday. Going back on holiday. It was a really strange little uh, little cameo, but fun. I liked it. Yeah. Actors live next door to actors. It happens. And then it says, that's kind of the end, but then it says epilogue. We get an epilogue. We get an epilogue. It's our first epilogue on bottom of the Yeah, screen. I think it is. Nora and Karis are moving away. Yeah. and he, Even though they've only just moved in. But Handsome's helped somehow. Yes. So whether he's given them some money or he's, set them, he's found the new place that they're going to, it's not really... Doesn't really explain. It's not really explained, but that doesn't really matter. The, the point is, he's he's done this. He we know he likes Nora. Yeah, he's helped set them on their next venture. Um, <laughs> I really like this scene. Yeah, I did. As so well. she basically is telling him, you know, well, because you've helped us out, I think it, I can't really ever repay you. And obviously, you'd be really, you'd feel really awkward if if we obviously kept seeing each other and and we know that you'd done us this favor so yeah. basically it's it's probably best if we never talk to each other <laughs> ever again and, and his little heart's breaking you can see it breaking and he's like no I'm, it's, it's fine. like ralph in the sense or anything and he's trying to like not beggar but also try and convince her that that's a bad cause yeah, like, oh, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be awkward it'd be fine it'd be fine and, so, and then she says to the kid can you do you want to thank gene as well and so she actually does put on a dance show this time. she says i I'm not going to say thank you. I'm going to thank you for this interpretive dance. <laughs> and she does this dance and her little camp friend standing there clapping along next to it. The, the kid had obviously not practiced that dance. She was, she was just told to just be crazy. And she was kind of like crawling along the floor and doing it. She did the robot at one point. And then just because, again, the rule of three is funny if things happen in threes. So Nora gives Gina a hug and to say goodbye. And then the removal, va- uh, removal guy comes out of the <laughs> yeah. house and she says, oh, thank you for all your help. So they flirt a bit. And then she gives the removal guy <laughs> a really long, uncomfortable hug. Yeah. Again, everything's just totally silent. And Jean's standing like... Really awkwardly. Really to close it. to them, just watching them hug. It's, it's just, <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah, so then they kind of leave. And he talks to the other neighbour for a little while. And the dog shits on his lawn. Yeah. It's the end. That's the end of this film. Yeah. What do you think? I liked it. I loved it. I mean, if you'd asked me for a one-word review... I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, <laughs> well, I've got one, so I'm okay, going to say... Cool. I, I would say it's like ambling. Yeah. It's sedate. I can't believe I forgot that again. But it is... It's a really sweet film. Yeah. It's not a comedy you can't... It's not one of these ones you can just put up on the on the, in the background and you've, you've got to... I feel stupid saying you've got to pay attention to a yeah, film. Yeah, I know what you mean. But though. you will get more out of this. You don't want to be missing any of the jokes. Yeah, cause don't, there's lots of callbacks. There's don't be of... fooled that it's a light, fluffy piece. No. Because it isn't. No, it's, it's like it's, an overlong it's episode slow, of Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah, it is. Because it, you don't want to miss any... If you miss one of the jokes, that's going to get called back three or four times later on. And you don't want to be doing that. The detail is there and it's rewarding if you can pick up on that. Yeah. I love Jeff Garland anyway. This, I do as this well. is this this is really well done. Everyone looks like they're having a good time in yeah, this. Looks like a lot of fun. There's, like I say, there's several times in this where you can you can see they've cut just before or just after they've burst out laughing. I like I said earlier, I'd love to see the bloopers. I'm sure there's some out there. I we we all know my history with comedy films by now, and I, d- I don't do them, but this is my sort of comedy. Yeah, I this I liked is... it. I but I. I'm not sure I'd recommend it because I think I know a lot of people wouldn't like it. It's it's definitely a, a film that me and you will enjoy. But is it a film for everybody? Probably not. Yeah. But if you if you like this sort of ad libbed Kirby enthusiasm style humour, you're gonna love it. Yeah. And I I really enjoyed it. I it was a lot of fun. I'd like to see more of these. Yeah, me too. I, I, I think, think there's a whole world there you could explore. I think as a I don't know if Netflix is looking... I don't know how well this is done. I don't know if Netflix is looking for... Well, it's always looking for content. Yeah. I'm sure you could have several Gene Hansen movies. Yeah, there's a, there's a franchise there. Whatever you want, you want to, to yeah. call them. Yeah, definitely. There's a franchise there somewhere. It's not highly rated. It's 5.2 on IMDb, so it's the lowest rated we've seen so far in this season. That's pretty low, but then I, th- I, was, I don't think I mentioned last week, I thought that was... Because that was only like a 5.7. 5. 5. 5.7 5. for what keeps you alive. Yeah. That's low, and it is tough to get a high rating on IMDb. It is, yeah, but yeah. No, I, I good. I I enjoyed it. Me too. I'm increasingly concerned that 
<laughs> the randomizer has been very kind to us. So Agreed, far it has. In season We've two. seen three good films in season two so far, so I'm not expecting much on next week's, but we'll see. Um, did you get a trivia question for me? Yeah, I have. So, like I said uh, uh, last week, we're doing this now where we're trying to find out who the most observant one of the two of us is. So uh, we've decided to come up with a trivia question each and see if the other one got the answer. Go for it. So Jeff Garland's son, James, was yeah, in this movie. He was. Can you tell me who he played? No. <laughs> I know he plays in the Goldbergs. <laughs> Who's in the Goldbergs? He plays young Murray in the Goldbergs. What does he? Yeah. Um, I don't remember seeing... I, I remember seeing his name on IMDb, but I don't remember seeing him in the film. Uh, would you like to have a guess? Yeah, I'm going to have a guess. I'm just thinking. Was he the driver of the tour bus? That's a good guess. No. Oh, damn it. So there's a scene in this, which I don't think we mentioned, actually. It's only a very short scene. So after Handsome has... Uh, oh, I know now. <laughs> Devastating. As, uh, we af- didn't mention it. After Handsome's left um, Nora's house after talking to Nora and no other neighbours come around, he goes to a fast food joint. Yeah, he does. And he basically goes and sad Gutted. eats. Yeah, he buys a burger and then he says, I'm never buying another burger again. This and, is my last ever burger. And he has a bit of a heart to heart with the guy who's serving him. Yeah. And he basically, the guy basically says, you can do better than this. You know, you don't have to eat this stuff. And so it's the guy working at the fast I'm food. I'm devastated restaurant. by that. <laughs> devastated. Um, that seems really out of place because it doesn't, there's no need for it to be in the film. And it's just a bit of a throwaway scene and I'd completely forgotten about it. But it's there because I'm, yeah, I'm okay. guessing, it, just to put aside just the film more... for a minute. Because Jeff Garland wanted to son, improvise yeah. a scene with his film, yeah. a, a, a scene with his son <laughs> the, the, the in the film. The, 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 the. Gutted. Okay. Um, I think you're going to get mine. So obviously, at the beginning of the film, Amy Sedaris gives Jeff Garland some cookies. Yeah. What shape were the cookies? Do, do you know what? I think I could go through the whole season without getting any of these. Right. <laughs> you honestly don't know that. I thought they were all different. No, they're all. There were. There was a theme to them, but the majority, the only ones you saw, were all in the same shape. Were they stars? No. They were beach balls. No. I thought you'd know that. I honestly genuinely thought you'd know that. Okay, that brings us now then to the stream table because we've already got two films there now so we need to know where this one goes. So we put What Keeps You Alive in above Michael Inside. Yep. So What Keeps You Alive is currently at number one. Michael Inside at number two. Where's this one going? I'd put it in the middle, I think. Really? Yeah, I think. I think I, I would. I think it's close. I think it's really I'd, close between all three of them. I, I think one, I, none of them deserve to be the worst film out of the three of them. I think I'd give it the edge over Michael Inside. I think I'd give it the edge over What Keeps You Alive. Really? Yeah, genuinely. Oh, that surprises me. I, I, it surprises me as well, but I genuinely think this is better. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. Are we going to resolve this? It's, it's early in the season for an argument. Yeah, I just, I just think what, it doesn't really matter because at the minute. There's no way. I'm hoping that we see better than these. Yeah. And that something's going to come out on number one. But I think what keeps you alive is more memorable. Yeah. But I, I think what's. It good, depends. What, do you want to owe me one or do you want me to? Use <laughs> what, the way I'm looking at it is I don't watch many comedy films that I enjoy. And so to find one that I enjoyed as much as I did in this one means a lot. And. I don't, there's a, like I said, it's really close between all three of them. Any one of them could be the best film. I think where I'm coming from is, and I don't mean, I don't mean this to downplay this film, but that's probably what it'll sound like. <laughs> this film was what I expected. What Keeps You Alive wasn't. And What Keeps You Alive was more of a pleasant surprise for me. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I that's where I'm that. looking at it. This, I, I really like this film, but it, it was as good as I expected it to be because of the people who were involved in it. This film right. could have gone either way. It could have been awful. Could yeah. have been like really awful, but it isn't. It's really good. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you there. I was expecting this to be funny. But it's, it's a toss it. of a coin. It is. It, it, it is so close between all three of them. Michael Inside's just as good as these two films. But I think you're right. I, I'll go with you then. I will put this at number two. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Deal. But you owe me one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've got to regret that. What keeps you alive at number one? Handsome and Netflix mystery movie at number two. Yeah. And Michael Inside at number three. Yeah. And it is so close between them. Three. Any one of those could be number one. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, honestly yeah. could. We've had, so, like you said, so far, the uh, randomizer has been good to us. So shall we see what it's going to do to us now? I, I'm a bit nervous. I um, think we're due. Yeah, I think we're due as well. 
a self-loathing Jew. <laughs> <laughs> right, I found the randomizer. Do you want me to press a button? Please. What keeps you alive? <laughs> okay. Okay, we need to take the old ones off the list. Uh, yeah, that. let's okay, do that. Let's make. We need this. to do some admin. Let uh, Let me press the button again. The clapper. Okay. Has come up. Now, neither of us added the clapper to the list. No. The clapper was added to the list by Ross, who is the guy who designed our logo and the guy who watched every film from last season. So he'll be made up that this has come up. I think it's another comedy, but uh, we'll have a look. Bear with. So just while you're doing that, I'll, I'll just quickly mention uh, open invite to anyone. You can feel free to suggest stuff for us to add to our bigger, As you our can wider see them, list. They might come up. Um, and we, we do select everything completely randomly, but we have got a larger list on, on Netflix of about 50 to I think there's more. I think there's 70 something now. Films. We'll just I've keep adding to this it. week. <laughs> um, so yeah, anything you want you want to go onto that long list. Yeah, then, if you've uh, watched something that nobody else has watched on Netflix, let us know and we'll add it. Like I say, Ross added this one. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is another comedy. So we've okay. done two weeks in a row on comedy. It's an R-rated comedy. Right. And it says, the synopsis says, 15 minutes of fame destroys the life of a man who works as a clapper in television. Any idea what a clapper is? Well, as in someone who sits in the audience and claps? Just says clapper. Okay. <laughs> um, stars Ed Helms, Amanda Seyfried, and Tracy Morgan, and Adam Levine. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, Tracy Morgan obviously is in 30 Rock. Yep, one of your favourites. Which is made by the same people who made Undreakable Kimmy Schmidt, yeah. which has Amy Starris in it. So there's always a link somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, do you want to watch the trailer? Yes. Uh, you can't, because there isn't one. Bear with me a sec. Pull the trigger, dispense the nail, and whack it in one so hand. So what you're telling me is goodbye conventional hammer? Goodbye conventional life! Hello, nail oh, hammer! Whoa! Ran out of gas. You only ever get a little bit of gas at a time. Hey, you noticed, huh? I, I like to come by and see you. I like seeing you as well. I was hoping to save up to take you to dinner someplace nice. I would love that. Get whatever you want, by the way. This one's on me. I've been thinking about this ever since I first got gas at your place. You must be so excited about all your shows. Do you mean to tell me with no money down, I can buy a house. Two pennies on the dollar. What's <laughs> the problem, though? Do you know about the Stillerman TV show? It's the Jamie Stillerman Show. We keep seeing this guy. This guy's everywhere. Who, who is ever? We need to know who this man is, and we need him on this show. I'm sorry about all these cheap dates. All this TV stuff going on, I'm just a little out of it. Wait, you know the clapper? Yeah. But I'm gonna bounce back. What is that? Your head is about to explode. That's my head. You can take that off. What right? about the computer? Somebody's making money off of that. And it ain't us. I should charge you like five bucks right now just for watching that. Rock, Rock, hold up a second. We're from the Jamie Silver Rock, Do you recognize this man right here? Who's off? Do you know the clapper? <gasps> Judy! Some people came by tonight asking all kinds of questions. They had a photograph of you. Are you in trouble? No, I'm not in trouble. I like you, Eddie. I really do want to, but I need my job. Like, I need my job. How'd you get this number? Tonight is a night we want you to be on the show. I'm not comfortable being on television or anywhere. And stop harassing my girl. Where's Judy? Hey! Things got out of control, and I didn't know how to handle it. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm the clapper. It's great to finally meet you. I mean, you want to make a big joke out of me, go ahead. I just lost the only person that mattered through this whole thing. I can't tell you how nice this is. Good things could come out of this. Um, wait, uh, can I do it again? Don't look at me, look at the camera. Okay. You're looking at me, don't look at me. I know I'm talking to you, but don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look at the camera. You're looking at me again. Okay, that looks interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the clapper. Yeah, go out and watch the clapper. And uh, we'll be back next week to talk about it, I guess. Sure will. Cool. See you then. Cheers. Bye. Bye.